Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. I'm the wonderfully amazing host with the mostest Chris. And it's time for the cushion squeeze. We all settled now. <clears throat> I'm just going to talk like this for now on. I'm just going to whisper into the microphones. Ah, that's too creepy. I'm going to talk like this for now on. Ah, that's weird. I know the people who have like the microphone. I don't, I don't want that. I like mine down there. It's out of the way. Would it be weird if I had the microphone here, if I just held it here? What the hell is wrong with me? Let's just start the video, Chris. Hi, I'm Chris. This is the bizarre case of D.D. Moore. This is that chapter. That's Mike. This is a Meg T request. A lot of people don't like when I do these videos. But I'm going to give them a goo. Um, new segment we need to also talk about. You're welcome. And like and subscribe. And I have a story for you today. Go. That is very, uh, you know, you know what it is? It's very Shakespearean. And by that I mean it's a hoot and a holler. Part, you know, tragedy. And part, part comedy. It's very much like your man. Your man wrote it. And so therefore it's fitting that we have an actual Shakespeare in this old one. Abraham Shakespeare, that name might, you know, uh, ring a ling a few bells. But there is a lot more to this story than I thought anyway. See, he was extraordinarily lucky and ex uh, extraordinarily unlucky at the same time. Abe here, he won the lotto. And then it's the usual horror story as everyone around him wanted a slice. They wanted a uh, taste including a woman named Dee Dee. She was just uh, a little more thorough than the others. Let's give it a gift. Florida, I mean Florida, of course, come on, where else? Giddy up. Tampa specifically, the whole story takes place around, around kind of the, the greater Tampa area. You know why? Because that is where Abraham Shakespeare lived. You know, before we get to Dee Dee, we gotta start with Abe, who he... Something, you know, kind of biblical about his name. Uh, and the people in the story certainly broke all the commandments, especially that important one about, I think it's like, don't be a shithead, something like that. But once again, you know, before... That's not a commandment. For all that, let's talk 2006, because that is the year our Abraham Shakespeare he won the lottery. He won the $30 million jackpot, electing to receive it all at once, a lump sum, so it was $17 million. That's a fair bit of money, all right. Abraham was born in 1966, growing up in Lakeland, in very poverty-ridden circumstances. He dropped out of school in the seventh grade, so when he was about 12 years old, and as a result, he was illiterate. He would work a number of odd jobs, um, you know, including uh, burglary, and he was jailed for a time. But by all accounts, he was, you know, quiet, introverted, a humble dude, and that time inside made him a hard worker. He avoided booze, he avoided drugs, and he would have a child in 2000. In 2006, Abraham was 40 years old, and on a fateful day in November of that year, him and a co-worker, a Michael Ford, were driving towards Miami when they stopped off at a convenience store in Frostproof. There, Abraham asked his co-worker to get a couple of lotto tickets. As luck would have it. He bought a $1 million mansion, $100,000 cars, Rolexes, and was generous with the, uh, well, loads of people who came out of the woodwork looking for a taste. He would take big cruises with all his mates, holidays, 
His friends would, you know, hey man, here, listen, bit behind on my mortgage, would you mind? And he would. Michael Ford, the person who bought the tickets, would take Abraham to court, saying, no, 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 he stole the tickets from me. The court would rule in Abraham's favor. When you look at the story at this point, it's kind of like, you know, you hear those horror stories all the time, where a guy wins lotto, two years later, he's back, you know, working at McDonald's or something, he pisses the money away. That was sort of happening here with uh, Abraham. But also as it went on, again, a horror story of people who come into, you know, lots of wealth. Abraham was becoming increasingly depressed because he could, he didn't have any friends. People were calling him 24 seven, you know, looking to hang out and looking for handouts. He uh, uh, in Illinois, when you win the lottery, you are forced to have a press conference. You can't hide nothing. You have a press conference and everything. I I would recommend. I think we're one of the only states that does that. I would recommend in your state if you win to get a lawyer immediately. And I'm talking about big money. I'm not talking about if you win fifteen dollars. Get a lawyer, financial guy. Get things set up. And then have your lawyer be the one to claim the ticket on your behalf. You know, your lawyer, and I don't mean it to where your lawyer's like, got the ticket, bitch, it's mine. Everything is already set up legally. All he's doing is he is the, he is the front. He is the face to the public for your protection. And you're going to remain anonymous. And he's going to be the one who takes all that heat. Which, what heat is he going to do? He's not going to pass your name. Like, he's, he's not going to get phone calls. Well, he, he could get phone calls. Who was that? It's it, Trust me. They're not going to say anything. The financial advisor, they're, they're not even going to be brought up. That's just going to be between the three of you. <clears throat> Make sure the financial advisor is reputable. It's not like, you know, your cousin's neighbor's best friend who isn't exactly <clears throat> somebody that you would trust with pocket change, let alone millions of dollars. And plan it out. Don't just quit your job. Unless it's like, you know, $400 million. Um, I would even recommend taking the payment plan, depending on how old you are. Uh, and I only say that because taking the payment plan I, I would, and I only say that because the payment plan is over 30 years, and if you have $200 million in your lap, you're going to spend, 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 but if you're told you're going to get a, a yearly salary of three hundred thousand dollars a year I don't even know if it's that much you you can live you can live great but it it's gonna keep you from really spending really going crazy um, so gonna have people come out of the woodworks family friends families the one that's gonna come out and want the most because they're going to feel like they're you you owe them um but yeah i mean plan wisely and just just know that yeah that money is free you know i mean minus taxes and everything but like you didn't earn it you didn't work for it so you don't have the same appreciation for it now some people want to take the lump savings lump savings the lump payment and make that money, make them money. Um, you know, invest it and everything like that. Teach their own. Um, I'm not gonna tell you how to live, I'll just tell you what I would do. Back to the video, sorry. You couldn't trust that anybody was generally, you know, wanted to be friends with him, or were just looking, you know, just viewing him as a cash cow. That's the way it seemed with everybody around him was suddenly acting like that, apart from his mother. And that, uh, you know, $17 million 
It would have lasted longer if he set it on fire. Less than two years after he won, he was down to his last million. I really would like my old life back where I could walk the streets like a normal person, but got people coming up asking for money. And it was then around 2008 that Abraham was approached by a Doris D.D. Moore. She initially approached him to write, you know, a rags to riches story and how maybe it's not always greener on the other side. But hey, I'd rather cry in my Ferrari, you know what I mean? But soon, and I mean, real soon, she became his financial advisor. See, she herself, you know, had come from you know, small, whatever, you know, and made it big. And she wanted to write a book to inspire others. While she was discussing this with a friend, they mentioned Abraham. They'd sold him his mansion, and he, he had an interesting story. Also, when introduced, Dee Dee was shocked that that nearly all of his fortune was gone what's left for me she thought like i said abraham he left school early so he didn't really have much of an education and especially not when it came to you know finances money stuff like how to make sure your money doesn't get pissed away so Dee, Dee you know a successful businesswoman she said here i'll give you a dig out i'll help sort out your money you know, help invest, all that sort of stuff, so you'll never have to worry again. She became his financial officer, advisor, whatever. And so he trusted her. And when it started, she did really help him out. She did go to work. She helped him invest in the right places, in the right assets. She started going after people. You know, that he initially, he, he had initially, you know, loaned people some money, and these people obviously never had any intention of paying it back to Abram. So she would go after these people, making sure the money came back. So people, you know, around the area and the circle, they started seeing Dee Dee more, a lot more, you know, as she was, she became known to them. And it was around that time that they also started to see Abraham Shakespeare a lot less. <sighs> Today, we're gonna be unboxing these headphones that I bought online. <laughs> see, the thing is, I had heard of Honey, but I thought that that was way too good to be on the 9th of November 2009, a cousin of Abraham's contacted the police, reported him missing. Abe hadn't been seen since April 2009. Anything to do with Abraham, money, repayments, was now being done through Dee Dee. And people wondered and they worried. And the investigation began. Have you seen this millionaire? His name is Abraham Shakespeare. This is him being interviewed after he won a $30 million Florida jackpot. We first received information from a confidential source and confirmed it through some family members that, by the way, no one's seen Abraham since April the 7th. We initially thought maybe he left because he was tired of people tugging at him all the time. Natural. But as the investigation goes on, We've been through Christmas and New Year's. He's had absolutely no contact with his mother and his eight-year-old son, which we understand he loves dearly. We suspect the worst. Yeah. Do I think that you're a cold-blooded killer? No, I, I hope you're not a cold-blooded killer. I have not killed him. I hope he's not even dead. He's not. I honestly can't look at you and believe a word that's come out of your mouth. I you have, have lied and lied and lied. Wow. So, you know, who exactly was Dee Dee? Well, a con artist, a big one. And she was a native of Plant City. Plant City is about half an hour due east of Tampa. About 40,000 people live there, largely rural enough. A lot of strawberries there. They even have a festival. Hey, I booked my tickets. And in 1972, it was the birthplace <laughs> of our Doris Dee Dee Donegan. She had a happy little childhood in Plant City. She was in the Girl Scouts. She was a cheerleader. You know, a lot of what you think is maybe the, I don't know, idyllic all-American childhood. But you know what? Lame. Wait a minute. Abraham Shakespeare. <clears throat> I think I've heard this story on a podcast.
if you haven't heard this story, then um, mute mute it or or like move forward thirty seconds. But I believe um, spoiler coming in three, two, one. Sorry. Um, I believe she kills him or had him killed and then buried him under concrete. The name kind of rang a bell, but it, I don't know. It just kind of just sank That's in. That's what Dee Dee thunk as she was like, F this S, I'm Audi 5000. <laughs> She didn't come from a wealthy family, something she realized when she started in high school. But she wanted to, and she wanted to be out of there making the big books. Shove that up your strawberry. Success. After high school, she went on to study to become a, a nursing assistant, because she said she wanted to help people. She said she lied. Well, see, this part is odd, because it's so at odds as to what Dee Dee will later become. She got her nursing assistant certificate in 1991. And you know, she was described, she was generous, she would help people with bills, she would help people with money. It's like, what happened? In 1992, she married James Moore. And it seemed to have been a happy enough marriage to two welcoming a child in 1995, Robert. It seems Dee Dee remained a nursing assistant for about a decade before she started looking up. She wanted to be a business woman. And she began a string of businesses, right? None of which would be successful. Off to a great start. She worked as a saleswoman for, for Nextel, right? They, they sold phones back in the day. You know that rad flip shit? That. And she, she had her own business, all about cellular. And she also worked for a couple of multi-level marketing companies, Mary Kay being one. And to go along with her string of, you know, businesses, she had a string of arrests. In 1999, she was arrested for shoplifting. In 2001, she bought a car. She couldn't keep up the repayments. She signed a couple of phony checks, but avoided prison time, 12 months probation for her. She was then arrested later on for uh, insurance fraud and for falsely reporting a crime. See, get a lot of this. Remember the car I just mentioned that she bought and she couldn't keep up the repayments on? Well, what happened is to get out of this, she thought, right? She tied herself up and threw herself in a ditch. Then when a car drove by, she flagged him down and said that she had been kidnapped, she had been sexually assaulted, and it was done by these three Hispanic men who stole her car. They had held her at gunpoint the entire time. She went to the hospital, she went to the rape crisis center, and the police, you know, started up this big investigation. And then a couple of days later, this guy hearing about this investigation and this horrible incident, um, he was like, yeah, that car is on my property. And Dee Dee Moore paid me 500 bucks to just hold on to it. Police quickly realized she hadn't been kidnapped, she hadn't been attacked, and that she just hid in her car uh, to avoid it being repossessed. So, strangely, she'll do a lot worse than that. That same year, talk in 2001, her landlords filed suit against her and her husband James for not paying rent. She told the landlords that people were after her. Specifically, who was after her? The non existent kidnappers, perchance? Not this time. It was an ex Nextel employee that she had just fired. And after she fired him, well, she, this guy, he did not like that. He went onto her property, onto her lawn, and he set his contract on fire. What a mad lad. She said she was now scared. She couldn't, um, just, she just couldn't pay rent because she was being, you know, harassed and stalked by some scary guy. And there's no proof of any of this. No one witnessed the story she told. They were kicked out. Around this time, she owed her landlord three and a half grand and a radio station 20 grand. She had bought ads to sell the cell phones. So she declared bankruptcy, the good old get out of jail free card in 2004. Then she created a new company. You know, maybe this one will make me rich. This was called American Medical Professionals LLC. They were a nursing staff agency. It, it genuinely was successful enough. She was raking in about 200 grand a year. But Dee Dee, of course, you know, she couldn't resist being a con artist. And you know, it's not like she was doing it out of desperation. She was earning, you know, decent, good, quite good money. She was just addicted to, to it, addicted to 
fucking people over. She loved Neil having the last laugh. See ya, suckers. Ultimately, in this one, she won't have the last laugh. For example, in 2006, a couple gave her $60,000 that Dee Dee was supposed to help use to set up their company. Of course, she pocketed it. This Simpsons joke, that's her whole life. Now give it back. Give one back. She never faced charges in that one, you know, lack of proof, so of course she kept doing it. Over the next few years, companies came, companies went, until then, of course, she met our Abraham. See, Dee Dee had a very high opinion of herself. She's quite narcissistic, as I suppose probably all con artists are, and she saw herself as a rags to riches story. So she wanted to write a book, you know, a feel good, inspirational, you know, you can do it too. Hey, all you have to do is, you know, lie, rob, swindle, fuck people over, and you can be rich like me. So as I said, she wanted to write a book about herself, and a friend introduced her to Abraham as another rags to riches story and eventually she took over his life. She was divorced by this stage, living- This is the story I remember. I remember she was a pretty shit for a human being. In Abe's house, the mansion, and the police went to speak with her. Dee Dee told the police she had bought the house from Abraham. And not just that, most of his assets too were now in her name. And he had gone into hiding because he was, he was just so sick of people, you know, trying to get his money. He ran away, sure. probably sipping on margaritas in the Caribbean. And she showed the police. He had signed documents and all, showing that he had essentially left her in charge and she now owned, you know, all his shit. It was either in her name or Abraham Shakespeare LLC's name. And of course, Dee Dee was in control of Abraham Shakespeare LLC. He had also signed her over, you know, to the power of attorney, essentially, so she had control of his entire life. But most importantly, out of all this, Dee Dee, she didn't know where he was now. She was like, racking my brains. Because he wanted to pretend that he was dying of AIDS so that he doesn't have to pay child support and people won't look for him if he's dying of AIDS. The police spoke with everybody who knew him and no one had seen him. So you could just get out of ch paying child support payments if you just l say you have AIDS. I mean, damn, what a loophole. So any um, fathers out there who, who are paying child support, you don't want to, just, I can't, I can't, I got AIDS. Can you prove it? No. If they ask you to prove it, then just say this. No, my doctor's office is closed today. What about tomorrow? Nah, I'm not sure. He didn't test for AIDS. You know. Go there, get a gout test, come back. I think this is close enough. You don't have gout. Yeah, but I have AIDS. And you can't have both at the same time, so that's how I know I have AIDS. What? How does that work? They had heard he was on a cruise. Oh, or maybe he was in Jamaica. No, 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 it was Miami. Actually, I heard Barbados. Everyone had heard something different about where Abraham Shakespeare was today. But they had all heard it from Didi. So this lasted a few weeks, and the police realized nothing made sense. Abraham would be on his phone 24-7, all day long, you know, going through his phone records to see if they could find some clues. Because people were calling him all the time. That was until the 6th of April 2009, and then it stopped. Suddenly, just suddenly, it stopped without warning. All communication. They also noticed that Dee Dee, that, that day, Dee Dee and Abraham were texting each other from the same location. Later, on the 27th of December 2009, someone called Abraham's mother, claiming to be Abraham. And obviously, as his mother, she realized that was not him who called her. But this guy was, you know, hey, I'm Abraham, of course I am, you know, I'm alive, I'm all good. Don't worry about me, you don't need to look into it. It's fine. The number was traced, and it- That sounds legit, that's something that, like, a person would say. Tracked down, and it led to a guy. Not Abraham, shockingly. It led to a guy named Greg Smith, who <gasps> told the police that Dee Dee had paid him five grand to call Abraham's mother, pretending to be Abraham. The <gasps> police explained the situation and maybe but He agreed to help out the police with whatever they needed. Later, Dee Dee was named a person. Are you telling me that Dee Dee Moore might have fibbed? I'm calling baloney. I'm calling hogwash. ...of interest in the disappearance, possible murder 
of Abraham Shakespeare. Who else could no, it have been? She says she Who else could it have been, Mike? Who else could it have been? She too cannot find him. Sheriff Judd isn't buying it. She was texting from Abraham's cell phone to her cell phone and to other people's cell phone, giving the illusion that it was Abraham. How do you know she has his cell phone? She told us. And she told you she did the texting? Yes, because she was creating the illusion for him to stay hidden. In the only interview she has given, Dee Dee Moore told the Lakeland Ledger she believes Abraham Shakespeare is still alive. I think that he'll pop up if he realizes how the extent of what this, what level this investigation but went to. Then she began to cry. I believe he's going to pop up when zombies happen. That's that's about the extent that he could, because you murdered him, bitch. I. <clears throat> and she complained about the police search of her home and car. And you know what? He was he was forties, forty. When he, when he won, no education, could barely read, kind of illiterate. Just a nice guy. And when he got some money, people come out of the woodworks. And when you're a good guy, they will run right over you. And they don't care how much of your money they can get so long as they can get money. Because it doesn't, it's nothing. To them, it's nothing to you. I mean, that you didn't earn that money. Come on. You spent, what, five bucks for a lottery ticket? Come on. You got $30 million. Come on. All I'm asking for is 30000 And then again, and again, and it's, it's just... She always snores in her sleep. She has that um, reverse sneezing, I think it's called, where she her, her whole body locks up and she does that snort through her nose, just <clears throat> kind of thing. <clears throat> whole body locks up. And if you have a dog that does that, when they're doing it, just get a hold of them and just pinch their nose closed. Doesn't have to be hard, but when they do it, you want to pinch it closed then for sure. But you want to try to just keep their nose pinched. And when they do it, pinch it closed. And what it does is it it does something to the brain. Kind of triggers it to stop. Now, they're going to fight and let go. You know, walk away from you. Just keep them. Because she has it in like two or three waves. Just keep doing it. But she she's gotten to the point now where she knows that I can fix it. And so when she has an episode... Like if she has one, if we're sound asleep in bed and she has one, she will come crawling up from under the sheets because they sleep on the bed with me. She will crawl up from under the sheets or whatever and just come running up to me. And generally I'll hear it. And so I'll wake up and she'll just be right there. And her little heart is just racing. And, and just because she had a little episode and then she'll have them and I'll pinch her nose and everything's, and then she just curls up in a ball and lays down next to me. But she's a snorer. Maiden doesn't snore so much. And sometimes she'll snore and she's awake. She's just laying there just snoring. And I'll look at her and she'll just be laying there and her eyes will just look up at me. And she does it again and I'm just like, that's creepy. What are you doing? I'm sorry. I got sidetracked. I'm done. What else can they do to me? They've turned my life inside out. Dee Dee then contacted Greg again a few days later and asked him, hey, you know, just by any chance, do you know anybody who'd be willing to take the rap for murder, mainly? He said, yeah, I know a guy who's going to prison anyway, so. You know. 
If you didn't do it, why would you need someone to take the rap for murder? If he's not dead and you didn't kill him, why would you need somebody to take the rap for murder? Guys, I'm, I'm back to this thing. I think that she might have done it. I think D.D. Moore might be lying. You know, cough it up. We can sort this out. But he said, you know, you need to tell me everything because I have to make this you know, believable to the cops, right? So he found an undercover cop. These cops are trying to frame me for killing Abraham. I really didn't kill the man. What do you want? 50 grand. <clears throat> okay. Can I do it in payments? You're going to be a legend. And uh, you're going to be in a book. <laughs> and uh, probably on the Oprah show. I, I could be wrong about this. Does Oprah frequently have murderers on her show? If so, it's changed. I mean, Jerry Springer, sure, I could see him on there fighting clan members. But I don't think Oprah does that kind of thing. Could be wrong. After she thought she found someone who would take the fall, a few days later, she gave Greg the murder weapon and led him to where the body was. Wait a minute, guys. She said she didn't kill him. That's what she told the police. I'm really upset too because I put money on her that she did nothing wrong. I think I might have just lost some cash. Came into the newsroom within the last two hours. The Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office says the human remains found yesterday do belong to the missing lotto winner, Abraham Shakespeare. The big break in the case came earlier this week when a tipster told them to check out a home off East State Road 60 in Hillsborough County. When detectives arrived at that home, they started digging in nearby woods and they finally zeroed in on a 30 by 30 foot concrete slab yesterday. Yep. They brought in heavy digging equipment okay. and after ripping apart that slab, they found Shakespeare. Everyone. Earlier when I said I was going to spoil it, so fast forward if you did. I thought that I had heard this case on a podcast and I said something about her, about him being murdered um, and buried under concrete, but I didn't remember. Now, this is coming back to me. I believe the ex-husband um, buried him or had something to do, but he didn't realize. I don't remember. Sorry. There's remains an autopsy earlier today helped investigators confirm their suspicions in this case. And the home of course, you know, when Dee Dee took over Abraham's finances, she instantly made sure that was her money as quickly as she possibly could. She was, this is, this is mine, mine. Literally two months after meeting him in January, 2009, she transferred $250,000 of his money to her company, American Medical Professionals. They had debt. She bought herself cars, formed accounts in his name, forged his signature, formed Abraham Shakespeare LLC, and then had him removed from all accounts. She kept busy, I'll give her that. What else did she do? Basically, she had... How much of his money did she end up getting? everything. In March, after Abram <laughs> tried to go to the bank and withdraw some money, and he couldn't, he started to become very concerned about her and what was going on with all the, the all his money. He didn't even know where it was. Wow. In early April, she filmed this video. This was to make it look like, you know, he planned on running away, that he was hating everyone. Do you get tired of people asking you for money all the time, Abe? Give me your opinion on it. I've been to a year ago. Sorry. You, know, you just ready to start living your life, huh? They don't take no for a ounce or so. And just love to keep on and keep on acting. Mm hmm. Yeah. So where do you want to go to? It don't matter to me. I'm not a picky person. California. You want a foreign country? Beirut. Cozumel. Hmm? Beirut. Beirut. Wow. Yeah. 
Well, in Beirut. Well, how yeah. do you like? How do you like? Are you gonna miss your home? Yep, I miss it, but life goes on. And then, oh yeah, she killed him. And she would show people this video, you know, being like, here, he clearly was going out of town. He's probably going to California or something, you know? He talked about it. At one point, she approached the mother of Abe's son, offering her a $200,000 home if she told the police she had seen him recently. What a bitch. The day after she killed him, her and Abraham were supposed to go to a meeting. And when he didn't show up, she told the other people he had an accident with a sex worker and had to go to hospital. That's all. And he was never seen again. She then had her ex-husband James dig a hole for her in another mansion she bought with Abe's money. He didn't know he was digging a grave. And when he filled it in with concrete, he didn't know there was a body in there. So when, on the 25th of January 2010, she brought Greg Smith and showed him where the grave was, he immediately told the police. Abraham was positively identified. He'd been shot twice in the chest. A later search of her office would find blood on the carpet, where she had shot him. Likely what happened is Abraham, he went to her office in her home, confronted her, and she shot him dead. After that, you know, the body's been found. Dee Dee, surprisingly, she contacted the police, because she had a story to tell. She said she didn't kill him, but she knew who did. There was a drug deal bought that went bad, and the guy's name is, uh, uh, so, I, I just found it out. Did you know I'm not the one that shot him? I wouldn't hurt. Then who did, Dee Dee? Tell us. See, according to her, Abe was involved in some drugs business. Things went wrong and yada yada yada, they killed him in front of her. She was... That's why I want to win the lotto. It's so I can get all this legal money and invest it into drug money. That's smart. Terrified. It was like when the guy burned paper on her lawn. So that's why she didn't go to the cops. And it's time for you to tell the truth. She's incapable. Plain and simple. You can't keep spinning lies. You can't be throw, keep throwing everybody and their brother underneath the dog. Because everybody and their brother had something to do with it. One of those people had something to do with it. Because one of those people knows. Because those are the people that wanted money out of him. The person, the person who knows is you. The one of the persons out of all this that knows is you, okay? You're the one who had the whole dug. You're the one who had the body put there. It's your property. All the money's in your name. Everything's you, okay? The only person that's gonna answer questions here is you. End of story, okay? Nobody here has lied except for you. Because you don't believe me. Because you're lying. Because and tried and tried. I don't believe your lies? Because I've had to lie because you don't go and look out. Nobody you else. You, just, you, don't, you don't listen to me. You haven't had to lie, do you? Yes, I have. No, you have not. I have had to rely profusely you. because you don't believe me. You don't believe me. I don't believe... Because they're lies. How can I believe lies? Thank you. I've had to lie because you don't believe me. No. All you've done is lied. You're a pathological liar. You're a murderer. You're blaming everyone else when everyone right now, I'm including myself in this discussion with the cop and her, when two of us know who the killer is, two of us know that the killer is the one with blonde hair amongst the three of us. And the killer is the only one who's grasping at straws and blaming everyone else. It was a drug deal. It was this. He's on vacation. He's here. I tell you what. Prove it. Prove it. I would say call his phone, but you have that too. Prove it. Tell us where he is and we'll search for him. And it has to be 100%. We'll search for him and we'll find him. And we'll bring him back. Oh, we can't do that because we just found the body. Two shots to the chest. Buried on your property. A hole that was dug by your ex-husband. Body placed in there by... You wanted someone 
$50,000 to take the rap for murder, which didn't happen, remember. He wasn't killed. He was gone. He was on vacation. He was this. He was that. Just shut up. I think, I think it should be okay in these interrogations, especially like this, when you just know. You, you should be able to just start strong-arming a, a person. A little pistol whip in an interrogation room, I don't think it's bad. I mean, especially right now. But, because the rights need to be protected and everything like that, you should handcuff the person to said, uh, like, table and chair and then do their legs as well so you can really get that whooping on them so they can't defend themselves. Boy, they will tell the truth then. You shouldn't do that. You've lied because I don't believe you. That makes no absolute sense at all. I didn't believe you because they were lies. I, I have ran so many bullshit lies and little things, rabbit holes, as, as my partner here likes to talk about. I've ran through all of these. It is getting pathetic. So far, all the shit you've given us isn't panning out. Because I you. didn't know their name, and I kept telling y'all that. There, you you're want, putting it you plural, want. plural, their name. Is it one person, two people, 12 people? I mean, I think tomorrow we're probably going to get a phone call about 10 o'clock in the morning saying, you know, I, guys, I really want to come in and talk to you this time. I'm going to tell you the truth. I've told you, you know, the truth we're at a party, the beginning, and, you and there's 40 people in my office. Beginning. You told him the truth at the beginning. You said he was gone. You said he went on vacation. He went here. He went there. Oh, then you tried to get someone to agree to murder. And then the body was found. Okay, guys, it's time to tell the truth. We should have been telling the truth earlier. Now you don't decide to tell the truth because now you look bad. Now it's time to tell the truth. But your truth is, oh, no, he was involved in drugs. The guy got $30 million free money. And you think he's going to invest it to become a drug dealer? How many drug dealers do you know that want legal money? Anyone seen The Wire? Stringer Bell? By the way, my favorite, one of my favorite shows. Who who looks at Stringer Bell? Look, uh, Avon Barksdale. That was a guy who just liked being a gangster. Drug money, he didn't care. Drug money was drug money. Drug money, legal money, mm, that's just not his life. Stringer Bell wanted to take drug money, turn it into legal money, and make it worth it by opening up fake businesses. He had a mind that worked differently. But he was one. Like, I'm just angry. At the, at the, hang on, hold on. At the beginning, you told us the truth? You threatened to hold on, let's go back to the beginning. Abraham's alive and I talk to him all the time and I take him and he calls me back. There's the beginning. That was what? the beginning for two goddamn months. They let her go while they awaited the arrest warrant. Local live and first on WESH, defiant, tearful, and claiming she's not a killer. Now, the woman linked to the death of a local lotto winner, Abraham Shakespeare, is speaking out. Because the media will not leave and this is an intrusion on all my neighbors and they don't deserve any of this. D.D. Moore started with one message, but quickly shifted gears when asked about the murder of Abraham Shakespeare. He said, I have never hurt that man. He knows I would, everyone knows I would never hurt that man in any way. Did you murder Abraham Shakespeare? Absolutely not. And I Even, not you indicated you know who pulled the trigger. Um, I have given all the information to the sheriff's department. With the situation and how it went down, I wouldn't believe myself. I would say, lock her up. I would, because, but there's always two sides to every story. There's always more to any situation. Not if above knows I didn't shoot that man, and that is the only person I have to answer to. They got the arrest warrant on the 2nd of February, and she was charged with first-degree murder. She pleaded not guilty. She and her defense kept up with the drug dealer story. She went on trial in 2012. While she didn't testify, she did make a scene. A couple of times. Ms. Moore, I'm going to tell you once again, you need to compose yourself. Uh, do you understand that? You, We're not uh, going to go back and forth. You need to compose yourself, and I'm about to give you time to do that and to speak to your lawyer, at which time uh, y'all will make a decision about how you approach uh, your cross-examination. Detective David Clark testified Moore got so... Um, I'm, I'm 
I don't know how this works, but is is she not allowed to cry in jail or like? I, I don't know. If you honestly didn't do anything, like, I I would find it very difficult to just sit there and listen to something when you know it's wrong, and not have a visceral reaction to it. Like, what are you talking about? I mean, not saying that out loud, but like my face would be screaming that, like. Like, where are you getting this from? Is that not allowed? It's, you know, crying and all that stuff. It, she's got to be doing something else. Or is maybe she's crying and she's like sobbing and she's, she's being a bit distracting that way. I don't know. I don't know how it works. Any of you subscriber scholars out there, please inform me. Because I, I, I'm curious to know. I'm sure there's probably something. She was probably just being loud. and Oh, I didn't kill Abraham. Oh, and they were just like, oh, shut up, bitch. Desperate after he caught her in another lie that she offered to have sex with him. She um, told me that she could get a free room at the Hard Rock Casino and um, her perform sexual acts on me. She actually came toward me and she said that I wasn't going to get angry that I was going to have sex with her. She said she was very attracted to me and hoped once her name was clear that I would pursue a relationship with her. I've told you before, it's not in your Dee Dee Moore nearly got thrown out of the courtroom for making faces during testimony. Ms. Moore, I've cautioned you throughout these proceedings and any gestures, facial expressions, audible comments showing approval or disapproval are not acceptable. Dee okay, I guess you're not allowed to do that. I, I, didn't, I didn't realize that. Huh? Okay. Dee Moore was treated in the jail infirmary after she complained about pain from her leg restraints. I had an anaphylactic shock. Sorry, my tongue. I had an anaphylactic shock. It's been reported to the court what? that you may have engaged in conversations that could be construed as threats to witnesses in this case. Oh, Accordingly, you are now being excluded from these proceedings. You'll go outside where law enforcement will have an opportunity uh, as appropriate to uh, to interview you. Now step out. I want you to talk to her again. You are to compose yourself. That is to stop. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. She was found guilty of first degree murder. Mandatory life in prison. State of Florida versus Doris Donegan Moore. Kate. Stone faced, unlike past tears or smiles. The defendant is guilty of first degree murder. She maintains her innocence to this day. She really was one of the bigger con artists I think I've, I've seen you know, kind of pieces of shit. She would swindle anybody and everybody out of their last dime, not caring about anybody or the future. And she didn't give a shit about her actions or who it affected the entire time. She was a true sociopath in that way. There was no end game in sight for, for Dee Dee. You know, as soon as she had used up Abraham's money, she would just find her next victim. The next poor bastard, scamming them out of money hard earned or no. In an interview with ABC, she was still completely delusional. Or just, uh, you know, responsibility? Not for me. Actually, earlier on when I said she wouldn't have the last laugh, it actually turns out I'm wrong. Did you bury him in your backyard? Absolutely not. Why are you laughing? Because... A, a man is dead. He's been murdered, yes, clearly. Yes. And you're laughing. Yeah. Because I find it entertaining that people are that ignorant. God knows I'm innocent. That is one person that knows I'm innocent. I think people are complete idiots that think I had anything to do with it. Although this is still pretty funny. Pencil me in as an idiot because I, I think she was 100% in it. I'm I'm not going to say that she's the one who pulled the trigger, but I think that obviously she was setting this man up to be killed, to be gotten rid of. I I'm 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 like 99% sure she did pull the trigger. And I wouldn't doubt that she she probably could have had him, I mean, he was in her house. She, I hate to say this, she probably could have shot him and then said, we were trying to do this business thing and he was blowing through money and I was trying to slow him down and he tried to attack me. 
she could have probably, she still would have been charged with murder because it was his money, but she would have had a much better chance of, you know, and I hate to say this again, but it would have been a, a black man with a lot of money dwindling down and a, if you don't look at her checkered past, a white woman who, I don't know why I air quoted on that because she is white, um, and there would have probably been this, oh, look at him, he's, he's attacking her. And then when you look into her past, you're like, oh, she deserved to be attacked. She steals from people. But, yeah, she's just a scumbag. Less than a minute. These are witness statements. You understand These them? witnesses don't exist, and that certainly looks like your handwriting. <laughs> what? What do you mean? The that looks like your handwriting. What you said were witnesses' notes. It looks like your handwriting. What? What? Thank you so much for uh, watching this. Thank you, Mike. She had witness statements, and they were faked. I didn't know that. Let's take a look at Dan Shekels, okay? Look what he said. Uh, yeah, right. What about Dave Epiglottis? <laughs> uh, what about Pete Sphincter? Look what he said. Yeah. How come they all have the same handwriting as you? I don't... What? 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 Well, another one bites the dust, folks. And I mean her. She's obviously a good person. She's been dealt a bad hand. I mean, clearly she had nothing to do with it. I mean, look at her past. That was all set up, you know? Somebody was out to get her. The man up above knows. Ugh. I just spit on my leg. Oh, well. Hopefully she gets sexually assaulted in prison with a butcher's knife. That's just my hope and a prayer. So we're going to end this video here. This is a Meg T request. I'm not as mad on this one, Meg, but I am still a little upset. I'm going to banish you for six minutes. <laughs> the last video, I think, was seven. Um, to be served concurrently. <laughs> Oh, it's 8.50 p.m. And I'm going to be heading to bed. Um, I got, I'm trying to do a video. So, we're going to end this here. We're going to end this here. Uh, have a good day. Have a good night. And um, the man upstairs knows something.